All right, let's talk about the wrap drill. We, we prefer the, uh, the skip or the karaoke pull, and I demonstrated that for you on, on, on the stage. And I can't do it right now. If anybody watching this that wasn't there, I'm sorry. But what we teach them to do is leave the inside foot still first and step back and behind the inside foot, pushing back to get distance between you and the center. Okay, so let's say this is power left. Okay, so what he's going to do, he's going to step back and behind with his right foot, his outside foot, and do the karaoke move and push back with that inside foot to get as much depth as he can get with that pushback. It's almost like a bouncing back and getting depth. This here, this line, I got it too close. Because if that center gets blown up by a big old jug butt nose and the guard gets hung up on him, I'm that's the guard's fault. Unless the guard does everything he can to get his depth and gets blown up and the center gets blown up that bad, then that dude's just so much better than our center. But I told y'all I have played with 145 pound centers and run this scheme and was successful enough to win eight, nine, ten ball games and the and go to the playoffs with 145 pound centers. Okay? A guy that was a third string quarterback the year before. That's a true story. And we, that's what forced me, and I visited with John Ward, and he taught me the karaoke pool, and I got to thinking. I still remember driving back from North Carolina, riding back. I wasn't driving. Riding back from North Carolina and thinking, that'd be perfect, and push back and get some depth. So we quick get those guys that pull flat, and then they run into the center in the nose. That just, I mean, they're getting, I told you, I was like Publix. Buy one, get one. No BOGO, y'all. Push off and get depth. Get away from the lineman. Get away from all this. And just teach this guy to hold his own and get a little horizontal push to center right here and let this guy get around so we can get that wrapper upfield on a linebacker. And then when they when they are coming down the rump line, these are bags that I put down working this drill. And these are drills you can work year-round. I know you can in Alabama and Georgia. I know some places I've talked with some of the cats from Michigan – at Kenny's clinic in Ch at Chapel Hill High School that they can't get their hands on their kids. They're not allowed to be around them and go over football stuff during the off season. I do, I'm telling you, man, the, the, the state associations don't allow that. They need to get right with God. That That is just bad stuff. You know, let these coaches get their hands on their kids and, uh, and coach them up. You know, nobody's going to get hurt when you're out there just working on air, using cones and bags. We ought to be able to do stuff like that. We do it down here in the South. But be close enough to the wall, to the down blocks, to strike a white tip match, okay? Those are those old matches you strike on anything. Those cowboys that strike them on their boots or on their blue jeans. You know, just be that close where you can take, have a match in your hand and just scrape it right across that line of booties right here. So they can strike a match. All right, well, this is a good wrap block. This is the same clip I showed you earlier where the guy did a bad gap, gap, hinge, gap, gap, flip. But watch the right tackle, right guard do his karaoke pull. He gets depth. This is one of the years we had a big old 300-pound center. And you'll notice he doesn't block back right away. He gets the nose because the, he was a 300-pound center. He wasn't, he wasn't bad. I want to push back, see him cross over. Okay. All right, here's another one. Why he's going to push back. His aiming point's bad. He goes too wide. Okay. Watch you pull. See how he gets around the down, the back block by the center? There's another good one. See there? The inside foot stays still. He pushes and crosses over behind the karaoke move with his outside foot. So here's his back foot right there. See how it's come behind his front foot? And he's pushing back, getting depth behind the down blocks and the back blocks. There's the center blocking back. Look at the space there. So he doesn't get hung up on them. 
and that gets him to the next level. And he winds up getting on. They had a safety playing right here in the middle. They were doing a gimmick defense against us, and we wind up getting this linebacker with the tackle, and he winds up on the safety. But that's good. That was a bonus block. He, boom, and he attacked the inside number. That's a good block. Okay. All right. Hug the rump line like you just saw those two guards doing the karaoke pull, the skip pull. We teach the rapper to always have eyes inside as they follow the rump line. Now, there is an exception to that, and it's coming up. But you want to be tight enough to strike a match on their butts right here. That's why I use bags. We put those half moon bags down and let them do that and just do it over and over and over again. Like I said, we do it in the off season. You know, I steal five, ten minutes during the summer. After weightlifting, if, if the uh, if the skill guys are out there, you know, throwing the ball around, bring those guys over there and just work this. Just throw throw some stuff down on the ground and say, hey, just wrap around this and stand in here and say, I want to see your eyes. Now their head could be looking down the field, their nose could be pointed down the field, but their eyes need to be inside on you. And then you can, you can just stand there and hold up one or two. Now when I do drills like that. I always do one or two or maybe throw in a zero, but I don't just do multiple fingers and all that kind of stuff and them having to cipher. They know it's going to be a one, a two, or a zero. Okay, usually I just do a one or a two. Okay, but we teach the rapper to always have the eyes inside as they follow the rump line, especially against uh, even fronts and against a three-four. Now, a three-three, a little bit different, and we'll talk about that. There's your match. There's your reminder. Now, the exception to eyes inside is versus the 3-3. Three, three. If you're using your tackle, okay, to block down on the mic, does that make sense? Like if your tackle's right here and he's blocking down on the mic, then you'll get this stat guy. All right, if they're a an odd front that plays a four that may go outside or they're an odd front where they let the back, the stack backer cover the B gap right here. That's different. Okay. That's the exception to the rule, but they usually, but they want to have their eyes inside. And I tell them, I said, I didn't have eyes inside here because you don't know what they're going to run from week to week. You know, these defensive coordinators are tricky. Their body will take them to the stack backer. Okay. If their eyes are still looking in here. All right, the aiming point of the rapper, whether he's rapping to the stack backer or to an inside backer that's over the guard or over or stacked behind the nose, is always inside number of the backer. So they want to stay tight. See, I adjusted the rump line and made it more vertical, like you might see if you're going to rap to the mic backer versus an, uh, an odd front. He's going to skip pull, get your depth, get away from the center so you don't get hung up. And then get downhill and keep that. Another reason I like skip pull, it keeps your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and your head can be on the backer. Your eyes can be on the backer. You're skip pulling. You're not pulling and turning sideways. I know we all grew up cranking the chainsaw, you know, and then throwing that shoulder back and doing. And I just, after visiting with John Ward and then doing some film study, and, you know, what really sold me at the time was, um, uh, Wisconsin, I went back and found some Wisconsin video, and that's what they did. <clears throat> and that's when they were going to Rose Bowls. And I went back and looked when uh, Barry Alvarez was the head coach, when Wisconsin had one of the most physical running games in the country, they were skip pulling with the big 300 pounders, them corn fed, you know, boys from the dairy land up there that Wisconsin always used to have. And, uh, and they did it. So I said, well, I've got smaller, more athletic linemen than they do. I should do it, too. And that's when I started doing it. And I, I like it. I like it. And so that's why we do it that way. OK, let's say that the backer is wearing number 54. The aiming point would be the four. OK, the aiming point is he skip pulls. 
and then he inserts in the gap here. And also, too, you can tell him, you know, you insert in the in the first gap or you insert in the gap where you see all oh, that linebackers inserting here. He's firing. And then I got to insert there, too. It may not be go all the way out there to the end of the last down block. There may be a gap inside right there in the A gap. And that's the other thing, too. You teach them to take the first available gap. OK, because most of the time a, a decent linebacker is going to take the first available gap. That's their job. They see because if that if your guard reads clear, then their linebacker is probably reading clear, too. OK, and so you insert right there and attacking if he's number 54, your aiming point is the four. OK, four is the inside number. 